Hello there. Well, this video is going to be a little different. Um, we're going to be talking about AOL Instant Messenger. And um, we're going to be looking at it on the Mac, on the PC, and on a few other different ways. Now, you may be thinking, why are you talking about AOL Instant Messenger? Well, if you haven't heard the news, unfortunately, it's shutting down on December 15th, 2017. So, I've been wanting to cover a little bit about this, and this deadline has just really made it a little more urgent for me to do so, because after December 15th, you can't sign on to the service. You can't really do anything with it. So, now's the time to talk about it, and uh, I guess that's all the introduction we need. So, let's dive right into it. Why is America on America Online? If you grew up any time in the 1990s and lived in the United States, you were likely aware of America Online to some extent. Whether you used the service, knew a friend that used it, or were simply bombarded by floppy disks and later CD-ROMs in your mailbox, AOL was nearly impossible to stay away from. I'm not going to cover AOL's beginnings here, but if you are interested on in the company's origins, I highly recommend you check out Lazy Game Review's Tech Tales episode about AOL. Clint did an awesome job on the rise and fall of the company, and it's a really excellent watch, so go check that out. Welcome. You've got mail. AOL was one of the most popular internet service providers at the time, and it's not hard to see why. They made connecting to their service simple and had a pretty great user interface to introduce you to the World Wide Web. Of course, this came at a price. In addition to the charge per minute by your phone company, you paid AOL a monthly service fee to use their service. For that price, you got access to AOL exclusive features such as easy to find keywords, channels, chat rooms, online shopping, and much more. As part of this service, you were given a screen name. This handle was one that you created yourself, as long as nobody else had the same name before you. This was your personal sign into the AOL community. In the early 1990s, AOL would enhance their electronic mail system and would bundle in a web browser to their software package. Later on in the 1990s, AOL added a buddy list feature to their AOL desktop software. This allowed instant messaging between you and your friends. No more waiting for emails. You could instantly message someone and have them reply back. This feature became so popular that AOL spun this off into its own application, and thus AOL Instant Messenger, or AIM for short, was born. AIM was free, so as long as you had an internet connection, you didn't need any AOL subscription whatsoever. All you had to do was sign up for a free account from the AOL website and you could chat with anyone on AOL or AIM. Versions of AOL and AOL Instant Messenger were available on Macs and PCs, so you could talk to anyone no matter what type of a computer they were using. This was a big bonus for me because I grew up with a Mac and most of the friends I had did not have a Mac, they had a PC. Now AIM of course had the same limitations as AOL back in the day, you only could really send text back and forth. Eventually, they would enhance some feature sets, with some versions being quite experimental. It started with uh, images that you could direct connect and send images back and forth. Uh, then later on, you could send files. You could also talk, which was a, a kind of like a voice over internet type of thing. I remember doing that over a 56k dial-up years ago, and it actually worked pretty well, but the, the quality wasn't there and there was a bit of a lag. AOL Instant Messenger was very popular when I was growing up, so it even crept into my life when I was offline. I remember drawing and later on animating some little cartoons with the AOL Running Man logo. I usually put the poor guy through a lot and ended up throwing him off a cliff or blowing him up. I almost feel bad for the little guy. Whatever my middle school mind thought was funny, I put him through it. Maybe this is proof that AOL and AIM had a deep impact on all of us. Or maybe I was just a bored little kid. Even though AIM was cross-platform, it wasn't always smooth sailing. A lot of the times, if you and your friend didn't have the latest version of AIM, some things like sending picture messages just didn't work right. Then, in 2001, when the first version of Mac OS X was released, Mac users were hit with another setback. This was Apple's new operating system, which would replace Mac OS 9. Although in Mac OS X you could still run OS 9 applications via a compatibility layer called Classic, the applications were not Mac OS X native and therefore weren't as responsive or stable. AOL would release a beta version of the AOL Instant Messenger software for Mac OS X, but it lacked features of the Mac OS 9 version. Specifically, Direct Connect image sharing and file sharing functionality was nowhere to be found. Therefore, you still had to rely on the Classic environment and the Mac OS 9 version of AOL Instant Messenger. 
Thankfully, it turned out AOL wasn't the only company for making AOL Instant Messenger software for the Mac. Apple would end up releasing their own AIM client called iChat. This debuted as part of Mac OS X 10.2 Jaguar in August of 2002. This was apparently the first time a company worked directly with AOL on an AIM client. Apple's client was Mac OS X native and worked very well. Apple got a lot of positive feedback on iChat, and the next year they would debut iChat AV for their next release of Mac OS X. This was a major upgrade to iChat and introduced audio and video calls. You only needed a 56k dial-up connection for audio calls, but of course you needed a broadband internet connection for video calls. Steve Jobs demoed this functionality at the Worldwide Developers Conference in 2003 and got a great reaction from the crowd. The first version of iChat AV required a Firewire camera for video calls. If you had a camcorder lying around with a Firewire connection, that would also work as well. Apple would debut their own Firewire webcam called the iSight at this conference for a price of $149. US However, in later versions of Mac OS X, particularly Mac OS X.4 Tiger, some USB 2.0 webcams worked with iChat AV. I remember using the Microsoft Live Vision web camera, the same one used for the Xbox 360, on iChat AV and it working flawlessly. You just had to have a USB 2.0 compatible system. Apple released a special limited time beta of iChat AV for Mac OS X 10.2 Jaguar users. Of course, Apple wanted you to buy Mac OS X 10.3 Panther for $129 in order to get the best iChat AV experience. However, they would also sell a special Jaguar version of iChat AV for $29 for those who didn't want to or couldn't upgrade to Mac OS X 10.3 Panther. Although the iChat AV audio chat functionality worked with some Windows versions of AIM, video chat would be a Mac exclusive for a long time. Eventually, a version of AIM did support video chat capabilities. However, at least in my experience, I found that iChat was always picky about playing nice with Windows counterparts, especially when using special functionality like direct connections, sharing images, or audio and video chats. iChat AV would eventually evolve into FaceTime, which is available on every iOS and Mac device today. The iChat AV application would eventually be replaced by messages in Mac OS X. And although it does retain some AIM account functionality, this will of course be sunset when AOL ceases the AIM service later this month. I have to admit it is disappointing that after all these years, things like iChat AV and FaceTime are still Apple only. It would be awesome to open these things up and just make them available to everyone. Unfortunately, we're going to run into some problems when trying to use AOL Instant Messenger. Now, a lot of the older versions of the software use a connection protocol to the AOL servers that was sunsetted in March of 2017. So, in order for us to actually connect to AOL Instant Messenger, we have to use a pretty new version of it, which is kind of a bummer because I wanted to really show you some cool things from the older versions of AOL Instant Messenger and of Apple's iChat and things like that, but when you try to sign in, you just get some weird error about your password not being correct, which we know is not the case. Now, if you wanted to take AOL Instant Messenger with you, you did have a few options. Before smartphones were common, there was an AIM forwarding service for your mobile phone. You were able to set this up with most cell phones, although standard text messaging rates applied and you could not initiate a conversation. You had to wait for someone to IM you and then you could reply. I do remember playing with the AOL Instant Messenger version on my Palm Pilot. Now, not all Palm Pilots, of course, were internet enabled, but those that were could use AOL Instant Messenger on the go. You either needed a Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or some other connection to the internet. This wasn't always practical, however, as especially in my case, my PDA only had Bluetooth. So to get online, I had to use a laptop to share a network connection to Bluetooth, and then I was only within a 30-foot range or so where I could use the internet on my PDA. It did do the basics and I remember using it quite a bit, but of course it didn't have any fancy features like the desktop clients did. So it made more sense just to use AIM on my laptop instead, although it was pretty cool to have it on your PDA. But what was interesting was there were some standalone devices marketed towards teenagers and tweens where you could use AOL Instant Messenger without hogging up the computer. Here we have two such devices. On the left is a Zipit Wireless Messenger 2, and on the right is the Motorola MX240A, or otherwise known as the IM Free. 
These devices tried to mimic some of the design cues and styles of the cell phones around at the time, but of course they were made at a lower price, so they had to take some shortcuts here and there. While the Wireless Messenger 2 has a tactile keyboard, the IM3 has buttons that are similar to that of your remote control, so they're a bit squishy and not the best to type on. The Motorola MX240A IM3 came out in 2003 for a price of 120 US dollars. Unfortunately for Motorola, this product was not successful and could usually be found at a steep discount for 40 or 50 dollars soon after. My friend gave this to me a few years ago. He was, you know, just getting rid of a lot of his old computer stuff. And, you know, I took it because I thought, well, maybe that'll be fun to look into one of these days. And, uh, well, here it is. It's an interesting little device. It has a keypad on the front here. It has a rechargeable battery. And, uh, of course, there's a power plug to recharge that internal battery. The idea was that you would use this to go on AOL and Messenger and talk to your friends. To do this, it shares your internet connection from your computer, and this is accomplished by this little USB base station wireless thing, uh, which plugs into a USB port on your computer. So essentially, uh, with this and this, you're able to use AOL and Messenger without hogging up the family computer. So I'm going to install the Motorola IM Free software on this Windows 2000 laptop. Now, finding this software was no easy task. I, I searched high and low and finally found it on one of those spammy driver sites. In the rare event any of you are looking for this software, you could find a link below in the description of this video. It does install, but uh, unfortunately there are some quirks. Since this software shipped in 2003, AWOL has made changes to the way you connect to the AWOL Instant Messenger service. Therefore, the connection to AWOL Instant Messenger servers cannot be made through the Motorola IM Free software. Instead, we get a message about our password being incorrect, which is likely because it can actually communicate to the server correctly. Because of this limitation, it severely limits what we could do with the Motorola IM Free today. However, it is still interesting to take a look at the software and see what options there are available. Since we can't connect to the AIM service, there's not much you could do with this software. However, I did stumble upon the Alerts tab, which allows you to make changes to and edit some of the sound effects that are played on the Motorola device when you are receiving and sending messages with your friends. What is interesting is there's a music editor piece to this software. Now, I didn't click the button up until recently, but I'm glad I did. Let's take a look at what's inside. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Not one, but two different versions, of course. There were dozens of these MIDI-tastic little tones for this device. I'll play through all of them at the end of the video, but, well, here's one more. These are just awesome. Besides the awesomely nostalgic 1990s ringtones, there wasn't much else I could do with this software. Although I was able to get the base station to connect to the computer, the software says there's no internet connection, and I couldn't connect to the AOL Instant Messenger network. Since the service won't connect, let's focus on the hardware for a minute. When you first turn on the Motorola device, you have to pair it with the base station. At first, I didn't know where to get these numbers and letters from, but turning the base station over, you see there's a special code right on the back. To complete the process, you have to approve this registration from your computer. After the registration completes, it's going to try to automatically connect to the internet, which in my case did not want to work. By playing around with old AIM software for the past few days, it seems that one of two things happens whenever you try to connect from old software. Since the protocol you're using or the connection to the server is outdated, you either get an error that your password is incorrect, or that you've tried to log in too many times and you have to wait a few minutes. I'm skeptical if these errors are true, but even after waiting a bit, I still couldn't connect to the service. Since the PC software won't connect to the AIM service, I doubt this handheld would either. Anyway, let's move on to the Zipit Wireless Messenger 2. This works a bit differently, it does not have to connect to your computer. It instead has a Wi-Fi chip built in so it can connect to your router directly. 
The Zipit Wireless Messenger 2 was released in 2007 for a price of $50. This little device tries to be more than just a messenger. You can play music on it, view photos, and do a few other little things. I got this at a thrift store not long ago, sealed, so it's interesting to take it out of the box. This is the Zip It Wireless Messenger Model 2, but there was also a Model 1 and a Model 3. Now my hope is even if the AIM service is not able to be connected on this device, it also supports Yahoo Messenger and MSN. Now MSN is now defunct, but I guess I could try and use Yahoo Messenger if I wanted to. What made these devices appeal to parents is that unlike cell phones, there were no monthly fees and they used your existing home internet connection. So here is the Wireless Messenger 2 by Zipit. It's quite tiny, it just fits in the palm of your hand. Uh, here it is compared to an iPhone 8. You can see that it's you know, quite thick of course, but even when it's uh, extended there, it's, it's not much bigger than your, your cell phone. You know, at least a little bit bigger. But um, uh, it's it's kind of cool. It has a, a pretty decent keyboard, I guess, for the size. Um, you have a headphone jack here. Um, you have a mini SD card slot there. Not a micro, not a full, but a mini. Um, and uh, volume up and down controls here. Uh, mine, mine's never been really used, so it still has the, the plastic film there. So let's peel this off so we could get to work. Um, I'm going to turn this on. There we go, we see it's booting up into its little operating system here. Zip it. Interesting. So this is version 1.0. Um, it says welcome. Apparently I have to go through this little uh, wireless wizard here to uh, set this thing up. So uh, let me see if it will connect to my network. Okay, so it shows us a little list of our networks here. I'm going to try and connect to Mac 84. It's open. It should connect. It's just a, uh, a web uh, unsecured network here. I still can't. Jeez. Unfortunately, it seems like my Zipit Wireless Messenger 2 does not want to connect to any of my networks. I've tried simple 802.11g unprotected networks and nothing, I mean nothing, will connect successfully. Once in a while, I'll get an error about a DNS or a DHCP address issue, but something's not right. I mean, it should not be having a problem at all. My phone and this old iBook connects to the same networks I'm creating, and it doesn't seem to have a problem, and it's even running an 802.11b wireless card. I've tried sharing an Ethernet connection to the airport card on this iBook, and another iBook, and even pulling out this old router. Nothing wanted to work. I really wanted to get this thing to work, especially after I couldn't get the Motorola one to work, but I guess I gotta draw the line somewhere and just give up. Now there is a community of people online who like to hack these little devices and run Linux on them. I think the machine has a 312 megahertz processor with 32 megabytes of memory. Of course it has a mini SD card slot which will accept an SD card with an adapter. I'm using a 2 gigabyte one here but you likely can't go much higher than that. It has a special serial port here which I've seen some homemade cables for online and of course a little power jack as well. There's a pretty big battery inside too I guess so that may help. Uh, but it's all useless if it won't connect to your wireless network. Who knows, maybe one day I'll hack this thing to Kingdom Come and get the wireless to connect properly. Or throw it in the trash. Honestly, either sounds good to me at this point. In fact, the only thing I could get to work was the MP3 player, so I put some MP3s on this SD card and... Yeah, it works, but I don't need an MP3 player, especially one as clunky as this. I can't imagine wanting to use this interface every single day. When this device was new, you could actually go to the website and download some more apps for it, but unfortunately that's no longer possible. Although the website still exists, they've shifted focus and no longer offer any information on this product. So unfortunately, that's really all I could show you about the Motorola IM Free and the Zipit Wireless Messenger 2. Unfortunately, these things have proprietary software and connector protocols and networks and servers that just aren't available these days. So. You know, uh, connectivity problems aside, maybe this might have worked, but uh, this was already dead. So it's a shame. I really wanted to show you a bit more about these things and play around with them. Um, it's, you know, unfortunate that uh, these things have become paperweights, but 
What can you do? I'm certainly going to miss AOL Instant Messenger. It was something I used on a daily basis almost every day that I got home from school. I'd sign on and just see what my friends were up to. I understand that Facebook and Snapchat have really removed the need for something like AOL Instant Messenger and instead of being on our computers, we're on our cell phones. So, you know, it's the end of an era and it's sad to see it go, but I guess technology has to move forward. Be sure to stay after this video for those Motorola I Am Free midis that I promised you. Some of those are quite fun to listen to. I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed making it. It's a little frustrating when things don't work, but that's what happens when you play around with old technology. I have a new Macintosh video coming up soon. There's something special I want to show you. But really, that's it. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you here next time right here on Mac84. Goodbye. No way! <laughs> Not one, but two different versions, of course. Even the Coca-Cola theme? Wow. <laughs> okay. That's great. Aw, oh, I wish that was longer. Very cool.
<laughs> oh, that just screams 90s. Oh, and the YMCA. Goodbye.